Hi, I'm Maddie. And I'm Alec. We live just outside of Seattle, Washington. And this is our tiny house. We've been in the tiny house about two and a half years now. We got our house in February of 2020, and this was a month before the lockdown here in Seattle. So the second month we were adjusting to tiny living, you know, still getting moved in, situated. Then we're stuck in the house 24 seven together. <laughs> and we're still in love. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, still in love. And even if we lived in a bigger space, we would still hang out in the room. We're, that's just who we are. We like to hang out. We're we best love friends. To hang out. We have been together coming up on four years now. And uh, before we met each other, we both wanted to live tiny just in kind of different ways. I had a van and I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do van life. And he was looking into RVs, like Airstreams and whatnot. And then when we met, we're like, oh, you, we both had this dream. So it worked out great. I build uh, custom houses for a living. I work in recruiting in HR. I work remote. Yeah, we're in a bit of a hybrid situation right now, but yeah, I enjoy it. So we are living in our parents' backyard and we've been in our house for about two and a half years now. Our house is on a 26 foot trailer and it is eight and a half feet wide and is 13 feet tall. While we live in a tiny house, we do have a lot of hobbies that have huge pieces of gear. So we are parked right next to some storage. So we have great storage in the tiny house, but things like skis, snowboards, climbing gear, that's where everything goes in the shed. We also do kind of a seasonal swap of our clothing. So every you know couple months, we go and switch our clothes out from the shed. With the few short months and nice weather we get here, we have this nice uh, patio that my parents had installed and it just happened to be by our tiny house. So we like to enjoy nights out here. Maddie works out here a lot. Another thing we've done is we, I took a bunch of spare wood from work and built a nice little planter. In our planter, we have some strawberries and random herbs that we like to cook with every now and then. We usually forget to harvest stuff before it goes bad, but it's fun to grow. <laughs> One of our quarantine hobbies. <laughs> For utilities on this house, we are uh, parked right next to a 50 amp power pole that we get our power from. And we also get our water from a hose spigot up at my parents' house. And we have trenched in our water line so it's not an eyesore. And then speaking of eyesores, around back, we have a poop tank and that's where our poop goes. And we get it sucked <laughs> out by a honey bucket service. And then our cooking and water heater is off of a propane tank that is on the front of the trailer. With our house being parked in such a beautiful location, we don't want to just spend our time inside the house. So we upgraded with a nice deck that we have here so that we can sit outside, look at the trees, listen to the birds. And a future uh, project that's coming soon is we're gonna build a covered patio so we can enjoy it out here uh, through the winter and have a little bit more dry space like a mudroom. The goal of the deck is to keep our dog within range of us, you know? We can keep our eyes on her, make sure she's safe, but she can also have some time outside. She loves being outside. We do the slats so it doesn't feel like we're too separated from this beautiful nature, so we can still see through and feel it, but enough to where our dog can't get her nose through the slats. <laughs> All right, I think it's time, let's go inside. Welcome to our house. This is about roughly 350 square feet of space. Our most important design choice was windows with all this beautiful nature around us. We wanted to be able to feel closer to it and observe it and this house lets us do that very well. Another big important thing that we thought of was having a big sink to do dishes. Because we have the butcher block countertops, we can't really set wet dishes anywhere. So we needed it to all be confined to one space. Next to our big sink is our tiny little dishwasher. It fits about one meal's worth of dishes in it, so we have to stay on top of it. And then across from our dishwasher is our stove top that has these nice fancy little lights. And it's a three burner propane stove that I personally enjoy cooking on. I would like more burners, but I'm in a tiny house, so. And then we also have a little stove that fits a little bit of food. Above the stove, we have this microwave, which is also super handy because who doesn't like to microwave their leftovers? And then uh, this is our apartment size fridge. It fits, you know, a couple days worth of food, any more than that, and we're gonna be tossing stuff out because we're on the move all the time. 
One of the big things with tiny houses, as most of you know, is having a lot of usable space. So under our stairs is where we keep our trash can and uh, we put some extra dog food in there. And then above that is our dog's little storage shelf where all of her things are. And then on the other side of the kitchen over here is our pantry where we keep all of our foods, blender, wine. And then below that, we are plumbed to have a washer and dryer, but we currently use my parents' washer and dryer, so we store a couple articles of clothing in our air fryer in there. I'm a big fan of cooking, and this space has worked pretty well for me so far. A big thing I gotta do is we got a lot of cutting boards, because as I said, the uh, butcher top cannot have water, so there's always, I'm setting these things out, putting pots, pans, cutting stuff. This is my main cutting station, and I can just turn right over to the stove and throw things on and then the trash is right there, so I never have to move far. But I do make a big mess in this tiny space. Just, that's how life goes in a tiny house. Uh, we are currently parked in my parents' backyard. So we pay utilities, rent, so covers, you know, what we take from, from their land. Oh, we pay uh, 350 for rent yeah. to my parents. It can get super messy you know, living with anybody you care about, especially, you know, you want to be respectful of their boundaries. They want to be respectful of our boundaries. So they came up with a lease contract that we signed. And this was extending through the first year of us staying here. And it just covered, you know, what the expectations are. We love having clear expectations. So we know how to best take care of our house and uh, their space. So my parents are super awesome. They totally respect our boundaries and privacy. They're not you know, coming down unannounced <laughs> and they're, you know, we invite each other to dinner and we watch each other's dogs. So it's a good relationship that we have going here. Yeah. We were incredibly lucky and able to finance our house through my parents. And along with the lease agreement, we have a full mortgage agreement with constant, you know, we have to pay our mortgage. Yes. It'll be, our house will be taken from us if we don't pay our mortgage. So it's cl clearly laid out everything. So it's very nice. And we we're very thankful for that. Yeah. This was another situation where we went through legal contracts again. We never want it to be muddied or messy. We want expectations very clear. So I think it was like 102,000 when it came out with all the little things we added. And our mortgage payment is $858 a month and it's a 5-year mortgage. And then the the land lease is on top of that. So we pay about 1200 a month total with all the expenses for the same amount of money up north you'd have to go 30 minutes 40 minutes north you would probably get a studio maybe if that i don't you probably wouldn't have a washer dryer that sort of thing um you'd pretty much need to have roommates which you'd have to have roommates we don't like having roommates no it's hard <laughs> <laughs> let's say you worked in downtown seattle which i do you know especially before the pandemic when we went into the office um from up north location where we used to live um it would probably take an hour and a half and so by the time I'm home from work, that's three hours of my day spent commuting. And while I can work, it's just, it's a bummer because then it takes away time we could be together, time to be with our dog, time to do our hobbies. Just took a lot of life away from us. What's your commute now? Uh, with traffic, 30 minutes. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's on public transit. So, you know, waiting for the bus and yeah. Well, your real commute is 30 seconds from the stairs down here right now. Well. <laughs> All right, and now I would love to show you the living room. Let's head on back. Now this is our living room, but we end up spending a lot of our time in here. Sometimes I work at my desk station, but a lot of times I like to be down here. We can bring the TV down, watch some TV. The couch is fantastic. We store a lot of stuff underneath and behind it. And also we can pull it out and turn it into a bed. So originally we got the couch that folds down thinking, oh, we'll host guests, which yes, we do. But also it's really helpful if one of us gets sick or injured. Alec um, got a surgery last year that was unexpected and he wasn't able to do the stairs. And so this room became our bedroom and it came really in handy for us. So for me, I wanted to balance beauty and function. And so I love having nice decor in here. I love having photos, little gadgets that are cute, but also I try to be functional. So while we have the couch, like I said, storage, you gotta think smart about everything you have in this space. So in our ottoman, we store lots of games. We're big fans of board games. You got exploding kittens, you know. Also, we love playing Nintendo Switch. 
Animal Crossing fans, hey. <laughs> All right, so in the corner, we have a cute little fireplace. And while it's pretty, I like to turn the lights on, but it also is a heater. So a lot of times we won't use our HVAC system. We'll actually turn on different space heaters to the space that we're actually sitting in in that moment. And on the other side of the living room, we have all of Lotsi's toys. She is spoiled, so she gets her toys. <laughs> she also has her own little dog couch. Now, she prefers this couch, so she'll take it over, but you know, we give her the option. <laughs> Now on the other side of the house, we have our bar top and I have my little workstation. And when we planned our house, it was before the pandemic. I did not know how helpful this space would be for me. It's been a lifesaver. What I love about it is I'm able to fit my monitor. So I work with my laptop and my monitor. I need the space for both, but also I love being able to look outside. I mean, that's a great little pause. <laughs> So a lot of the decor in this house is actually reused from our wedding. We tried to get really thrifty and creative with it. So when we planned our wedding, we're like, let's buy stuff that we love and want to keep. So that's what we've got going on here. I love things that reflect light. It's all about light in this space. Um, we've got cute little rattan uh, pendants. And then I put little disco balls inside because I thought, you know, that's fun. Why not? <laughs> the sun can peek through and it feels like a party. <laughs> All right, so right next to my workstation, we also have a little bit of sneaky storage here right along the side. I've got all my computer work needs, um, you name it, we have it stored in here. So down below, I've got my work backpack stored, hooks really come in handy in small spaces. Right next to this is our dehumidifier. This is probably the most important thing we have in the house. It helps control the humidity levels in our tiny house. That is really, really, really crucial in small spaces, as well as in a climate like Washington where it's rainy and lots of humidity. And right back here, we have our bathroom. Now our toilet has dual flush. It's really important to try to conserve the water with our tank situation out back. We also have a nice little vanity here. We've got storage behind the mirror, which is super helpful for the quick things you need to grab. We've got really great linen storage in here. We've got a little bit of clothes. You have to get creative with things in storage here. <laughs> um, any extra toiletries, makeup, all that down below. I've got some of my hair accessories. And in here we have great storage for all the towels and extra linens we have. Now under the sink, this is where our water heater is actually. So not too much storage space, but you can fit a few things in there. And on the other side of our bathroom, we've got our shower. Now it is good spaced, but uh, the shower head isn't very tall. So for someone like Alec, uh, he does have to duck a little bit. The other thing is a lot of times we store extra things we're not using, broom, mops. We store that in the shower because when you're not using it, it's nice to just have it out of the way. We had a leaky toilet that filled up our tank and fresh water was flowing in the house. So we had to rip up our vinyl flooring to air it out. And we noticed some pretty severe water damage in a couple spots, but just was like kind of, we're like, well, we kind of flooded the house. so. That's what that is. So then that was in, I think, October. And then the following December and January, we had a crazy snowstorm. And that's when we started. We put in vinyl planking so the water was able to seep through. And when we stepped in the house, we started to see water bubbling from under the floor. So then we tore all the floor back out and started digging. And that's when we found out that our house had a major leaking problem. Yeah. Before we changed the floors, we just had one vinyl sheet. And so we didn't, we couldn't tell if anything bubbled up. There was no way, it was just one sheet. So when we did change the flooring out, that's when we started to notice some things bubbling out of places they should not be. So we first got in touch with who we purchased the home from, Tiny Mountain Houses, and we tried to get some ideas. And he said, oh, you know, you should reach out to who your warranty is through, Rugged Mountain Custom RV. And so we look up Rugged Mountain, Turns out it's the same company as Tiny Idahomes, um, built out of Idaho. And so we found out so a bunch of our builds, like 90% of our build was actually built by Tiny Idahomes. So when we got in touch with Tiny Idahomes, we explained what was going on and they recommended that we start 
pulling off some of the beadboard, which was what we had on our walls at the time. We've since changed it. But we had beadboard, so we pulled back the beadboard to try to investigate. They wanted to know further what was going on. They wanted us to send the house to them, but it was very pricey. The kicker <laughs> was that to send the house to them, it was out of our pocket. So, you know, three to four grand out of pocket just to look at this issue, not even to address anything. They couldn't even guarantee that they would fix anything under warranty because technically our warranty was only one year and this was at the two year mark. We figured we'll start looking through some of these issues ourselves. So they recommended we take some walls off and that's when we were able to see the water literally drip down behind the beadboard in front of the insulation. And we also could tell when we looked down and we took the uh, plank flooring up, you could see just really, really dark, dark pools that spread out on the subfloor. So you could tell this has been going on for a long time. This was a, probably ended up being about a three month process. Just back and forth email. Back and forth. First, they started out saying that it's because of condensation. The, like, and it's like, no, we run a dehumidifier 24 seven since a couple months after we moved in, we got a dehumidifier. And then they're like, well, you didn't uh, check on the caulking. And then it's like, well, it never showed up with any caulking. So we thought you blind caulked it because that we do that sometimes on the jobs that I work on. So I just assumed that that's what they did. They didn't leave that out. And then we just kept going back and forth. They kept being like, no, 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 this is something else, something else. So we ended up hiring a third party home inspector to come and look at our house. He was able to give us some ideas because we still hadn't found the actual problem at this point. And he pointed out that the fla the flashing looked wrong. So that's when we started pulling off the trim and that's when we saw where the water was entering the house. On a properly flashed house, the flashing diverts the water out and around your windows or any possible opening where the water could enter. But on this house, the flashing directed the water into our house, into holes behind the trim and straight into our house. And so we told Tiny Idaho Homes, we said, hey, we're hiring a third party inspector. We just want some ideas, you know, let's put some brains together. We don't want to pay the four grand to get the house to you. So I think this is a great option. We paid out of pocket ourselves for this and we didn't ask them to cover it. We ended up documenting everything end to end, photo, video, and we kept the notes from the inspector. Once we documented that and sent that over to Tiny Idahomes, I think they understood what was happening. And so at that point we had agreed and they had offered to at least send us the materials for us to fix. We had to weigh the pros of cons of, do we send the house to them for probably twice the cost of what the materials are, or do we agree and take these materials, since he has the skills and tools, we can fix it ourselves. And while it's a cost, he had to take his time to fix it. Um, it still costed less to do that than send the house to the warehouse. And next to the door, we have a bunch of storage. In this uh, storage place, we put a lot of our coats. As you can see, we still haven't transitioned out of winter. We have our big puffies in here. And then below this is, you know, assortments, anything, flashlights, jump ropes, workout stuff. And then we have our dirty clothes bin right here. And then we keep a couple shoes and a towel for cleaning off our dog when she plays in the mud. And over here we have lots of hooks because you can't have enough hooks in a tiny house. We keep leashes, muzzle, our keys, anything on those hooks. Up in this loft, we call this our craft loft. And we're going up here all the time during the day because Maddie has a lot of her crafting stuff up there. We have our plants and this is where I keep one of my fish tanks. So up here, as you can see, I have a saltwater fish tank, which became one of my hobbies during COVID. I was looking for something to do when I was not working. So that progressed into having two fish tanks in a tiny house. In the tank, I have um, two clownfish inspired by Finding Nemo. And then there's a little goby that lives under the rocks that you probably never see. And in this uh, cabinet behind me, this is where Maddie keeps all of her crafting stuff. And then this side is, um, more fish stuff and games. And then we also love to have nature inside our house, so we keep our plants up here. Now over here we have our bedroom loft and we've got these stairs. They are a little steep, so not recommended in socks and you just gotta watch your step. <laughs> but we've got the handrail so you can make sure you get down safely. So our dog, she can go up the stairs 
just fine, but she can't really come down. So when we bring her downstairs, we carry her in the mornings. All right, so we are now at the top of our stairs in our bedroom loft. And one of the first safety features we realized we needed was a gate to keep Lotsi up here. We wanted to be able to sleep peacefully and not worry about her trying to get downstairs by herself. So we crafted this little gate just from scrap wood we had around the house. <laughs> and that allows us to sleep peacefully. Our loft is super cozy. We love it up here on weekend mornings. We'll just spend our time getting out of bed so slowly. Again, looking out the windows. <laughs> we also have our dog come up and sleep with us. And so she's got her bed. She also loves to nuzzle in on this side here. It's really cute. She's got her toys. And we also have most of our clothing storage up here. Our clothing storage is mainly in bins and we have two little racks and each of us split. We have one rack for the top is Alex and the bottom rack is mine. We also have a few cute little decor around the walls to make it feel nice and cozy. And we have our TV. It's super light and small, so we just bring it back and forth upstairs. Whenever we want it in one space, we can just easily grab it and move it. We also have one more fish tank. This was Alex's first tank during quarantine, so we're very fond of it. As you can see, we've got a couple sconces throughout. It really helps create a nice warm ambiance and we love that warm feeling. We also have a metal roof. And so being that we're so close to the roof, we can hear the rain. It sounds like a noise machine. It's honestly magical. <laughs> Despite all the difficulties we've been having with our house, we are so happy to be living tiny and we would 100% do it again, maybe just a little bit different. For people who are looking at getting a tiny house, there's a couple things that we think, we wish we knew at the time. And one of a big one is, is asking who you're buying the house from if they're the ones who are actually building the house. Because there are some people who subcontract out. And in our case, if we would have done more research and looked into who was subcontracting out the house, we would have purchased our house from somebody else. So that's a big one to look into. Another thing I would 100% recommend, and I would recommend doing this upfront at the start, is ask them if they're okay with a third party inspection before final payment is made. We never thought of that. That would have saved us from the start if we had thought of that. If they're not okay with a third party inspector coming in, probably a red flag at least we would consider that a red flag and if you're looking at a builder who is out of state a thing to look into on warranty is if you have a warranty issue is are they gonna send somebody out to work on it or is it in like our case where if we have a warranty issue we still would have to pay to get our house to their factory or warehouse so it's something to think about if you're buying out of state cross country like you don't want to end up having to pay to get your house all the way across the country. So that's something to think about. You know, while we can't afford land or anything now, we're hoping, you know, when our house is paid off in five years, that opens so many doors for us. We would love to have our own property where we like to have a lot of toys and toys like our van, our RV, and we also love sports. So someday, like we think about, you know, we're gonna have a half pipe in our yard, you yeah, know, all sorts of fun stuff. We'd also love to be able to give somebody else the opportunity to park a tiny house on our property. Exactly. To pay it forward. Pay it forward. We're so thankful. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.